Welcome to this episode on the classical processing step that we will have for our point cloud datasets. Let's dive right in. So, let's take some perspective. If we want to attack a perspection workflow, for example, then with the real world and with some digitization technique that will transform into a low level digital model, so many geometry. And what we usually try to do is trying to push it to this high level digital model which will be usable for interpretation. So we will have some additional transformation like uh, injecting information from a domain or an application, translating, rotating, featuring, to get something that is much more usable for our end system decision-making system. Um, and that's really what we will, uh, the scope in which we will play around in this course. So now that you know that, let's check a classical processing uh, chain. That's not the ultimate, but that's one that is easy enough so that we can agree on uh, different steps. So the first one will be acquisition. So we will take some sensor, a vector on which we will place the sensor, and then we will acquire a, uh, an area, an extent. We come home from the field, we have this data, we uh, unplug, uh, unplug, let's say, the USB drive, we plug it in the computer, and then uh, we load the data into Python and we start pre-processing it. So mainly, as you can see here, the step here will be to eliminate noise or sample the data, so make it much more usable for the downstream processing. Usually after that or before that, it depends, eh, because we can use features for pre-processing steps as well, we'll try to engineer some features. This can be also after registration. So let's say we do that before registration, uh, computing some features of interest like you see here, uh, and even features that you will use, like ISS, uh, to register uh, point clouds together. And, and that's the next step, registration, point cloud registration. So basically, we want to bring um, different perspectives into one system. So point clouds from different perspectives into one common frame of reference. That's what we try to do, minimizing the bias, uh, the, the georeferencing errors and things like this. After that, our before, uh, that's also possible, here it's just one processing chain, which I think is very handy, but after we can go into segmentation, trying to group sets of points that have a similarity uh, criterion, or even deeper, uh, do semantic segmentation, so group classes, and even deeper instance segmentation, so having classes plus each object per class, for example. And lastly, uh, or not lastly, but before uh, going to the application layer, we have the structuration layer. And structuration layer is very important and it's often bypassed. So it's the ability to make uh, the point cloud ingestible into visualization purposes or when you need some interactivity or when you need to play around with the data. And even at the processing um, level, if you want your process to uh, finish in one minute instead of one year, then you need to play with the underlying structure to be able to process massive data in a short time frame. And lastly, there is the application layer. When all of this uh, is perfectly handled, then you can move into the application. So for example, uh, that's just drawing on top of a point cloud. And uh, of course, already here you see that mm, it looks like a bit manual. Are there not a smarter way to automate such a process? And that's always what we try to do when building a processing chain or a workflow, something as automatic as possible with as uh, minimum supervised parameters as possible. So let's keep that in mind. Some way we'll not use it directly, but that's always what we'll try to do. Okay, and in this specific course, we'll have two elements from the application layer, let's say the 3D modeling part, so turning a point cloud into a 3D mesh, or a 3D voxel assembly, and the 3D visualization part, being able to interact with the data and visualize that in Python. And as you can see, all that is in blue will be addressed um, through the projects that we will play with. Very good. So now you can see that except the acquisition phase that will not be covered and uh, is covered on other courses like the photogrammetry courses and coming up laser grammetry courses and coming up 3D vision course um, but except from this course where you will find such elements we'll cover all the rest at its base steps so you have the ability to attack any problem at least at the, at the base uh, level and of course you have possibility to upscale at the end if you need uh, feel like you need a bit more uh, depth on, 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 the, on the thing you want to attack, right? So are you ready? If so, we'll move directly to the next uh, module, which will be the one about setting up the environment. Let's go!